Hi, welcome to the session on CMA part one, financial planning performance and analytics. In this session, we'll discuss about dividends. What is a dividend? Dividend is an appropriation of profit. How the profits are distributed to the shareholders. How the profits are retained in the business. Okay, we'll now discuss about the distribution of dividend to the different types of shareholders, preference shareholders, common shareholders. What is the policy that the company set in the payment of dividend? and various forms of dividend distributions. Accounting for one of the forms of the payment of dividend called stock dividend. And how does the stock dividend differ from stock splits? What is stock split? What is dividend? Then different types of preferred stock dividends. When we issue preferred stock, we have are different types there the treatment and uh, why do you keep the uh, some portion of the profits in retained earnings is it necessary to be kept or just because the future keeping in future we are keeping aside dividend is first of all an appropriation from the profits of the company which is to be paid to the shareholders subject to some you know the the covenants covenants in the sense there is some kind of legal objections that you cannot pay dividend as you want okay so the amount what you calculate from your income statement uh, which is there in your net profit uh, we cannot say that entire net of net profit is going to be distributed to the shareholders as dividend because there is some legal restriction to keep some amount of profit aside to meet some kind of uncertainties. Okay, so we are not going to distribute entire profits of the company as dividend. There are some legal contractual obligations. You know, when you raise bank loans, when you issue bonds, when you issue debentures, not only this, some government obligations to say that these uh, uh, people invested money in your company, getting only some amount fixed interest. So keeping these, you know, the debt holders in mind, you should keep some profits aside to, to meet any kind of future uncertainties. Okay. This is an obligation, contractual agreement. This is the reason why you do not distribute the entire amount of net profit as dividend. A portion of this amount is to be kept back in the business under retail earnings. Okay. Only a portion of net profit is distributed as dividend. This is because you have some kind of legal restrictions contractual obligations when you issue bonds bank loans okay etc not only that to maintain some kind of you know the liquidity that you need to have enough amount of cash in your you know uh, 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 bank balances to meet the current requirements to pay the creditors on time to to pump in this money towards the expansion of the business and uh, to pay the dividends uh, to the shareholders in the future years without having any kind of difficulty and also to cover any future losses. In addition to that, you may have some covenants, legal restrictions on the external parties to keep the amount in a dividend or in, in a retail earnings. So you need to see that whether a particular dividend is legally permissible. Not only that, 
is it uh, the, the the company economically sound to distribute the amount as dividend we have enough liquidity position to you know pay the dividend so keeping in mind you need to set a policy you need to set a policy that what amount of dividend you are going to pay them yeah types of dividends we transfer dividend to the shareholders bank accounts cash dividend most of the companies follow this once the books are audited statements are audited declared dividend and transfer this one property dividend we settle dividend in the form of some asset some assets skip dividend we are ready to pay dividend but at the moment we do not have sufficient cash balances so we will hold it for some time and pay you dividend after two months or three months but don't worry we'll pay you interest for the period of holding liquidating dividend very greedy investment investors so they want to take dividend not only from the profits even from you know the other earnings as well okay so more than what we earn sometimes even they take some portion of the capital as well stock dividend or, or a dividend in the, in the form of shares not in a cash format so we'll discuss in detail about the different formats of dividend yeah now cash dividend property dividend skip dividend these are all the dividends declared on a particular date okay declared on a particular date and settled on a particular date so there may be a some time gap between declaration and the payment so there will be an accounting entry on the date of declaration there will be an accounting entry on the date of payment because the payment date is different from the accounting date okay say for example we uh, uh, declare on 15th of april that dividend is going to be paid but you need to have an accounting entry then this amount is paid on say for example 10th of this you know uh, january sorry june 10th of june then this cash is settled on this day so you will have a payment entry so you will have two accounting records here one is for accounting the declaration on the date of declaration and uh, the next one is a payment entry where you settling the amount of dividend okay right so now let us see 15th of april what happened when cash dividend is declared it will increase your liabilities and it will decrease your equity let me give an example now the moment the 15th of april we declare a dividend the entry is going to be debit dividend payable dividend payable credit retained earnings so dividend payable is created as current liability current liability so this will increase your liabilities okay so until when until 10th of june when you pay this amount it will be settled isn't it so until 10th of june you will have a liability created in a dividend payable account and this retained earnings account is uh, uh, sorry you have to reverse the entry i just made a reverse entry here so on the declaration date 15th of april you should write uh, a retail earnings debit retail earnings should be debited reduce no credit dividend payable dividend payable okay right so you created an account here dividend payable this will be there in liability current liability yeah 
and this is decreasing your equity okay this is decreasing your equity now on 10th of june you are paying this amount right so this amount was there in the liability for a period now you debit this account dividend payable debit credit cash account okay cash account decreases and liability also decreases on 10th of june cash dividend liability is created and nullified on the date of payment clear now we do not pay dividend in the form of cash but we want to give some property to the shareholder as dividend so on the declaration date the entry remains same you are creating a liability dividend payable and your retail earnings are going to be decreased so retail earnings debit dividend payable credit but on the payment date see instead of paying cash you are settling with the asset you may give a, you know a mission a vehicle a land a building whatever to a shareholder so instead of paying in dividend you are giving an asset okay so only difference is in the place of cash asset is credited because asset is going out of your business okay now the next one is script dividend what is script dividend sorry shareholders we want to pay you dividend we declare dividend but we will pay you this dividend after some time we pay in cash then shareholder will ask you a question that why should we wait okay for this much time all right say you are creating dividend declaring dividend declaring dividend on 15th of april you are supposed to pay on 10th of june but you are paying on 10th of september so july august september 3 months why should we wait okay no problem we will pay interest for this 3 months okay so the the, the dividend amount say for example 10000 and an interest of 200 we will pay you 10200 clear so how to account this 10000 how to account this 200 we learn in detail a script dividend means a dividend is escalated for future period and settled in the future along with interest so we will pay some interest to the shareholders because we are deferring the payment okay stock dividend we pay dividend to the shareholders not in the form of cash not in the form of assets but we will give them some extra number of shares okay so there is no effect on the equity so what we are doing here is just we are giving them some extra shares like you hold 100 shares you will be given two shares extra now on what you will be having 102 shares okay instead of 100 shares you will have 102 shares this extra two shares you are getting as a bonus here this is stock dividend okay perfect so now no effect on the date of declaration but on the payment on the distribution date it is going to be increase in share capital okay your share capital is going to increase and your retail earnings are going to be decreased so simply you will be passing an entry that the retail earnings account is going to be debited and further you are crediting the share capital account in all the cases your retail earnings are going to be deb debited you are reducing this amount okay but you are not paying cash you are not giving any asset but this time you are giving additional shares and here net effect is going to be nothing in your equity why because your retail earnings is a part of equity your share capital is a part of equity 
okay it is not going to affect at all right now let us learn this amount of dividend cash property script in detail yeah as you know that there are some important dates in a, a dividend settlements date of declaration on which dividend is declared and accrued not paid immediately in my previous example say 15th of april you declare dividend x dividend date because the shares are bought and sold on regular basis in the open market so there should be some cutoff date which will decide the eligibility for getting dividend let us assume that 29th april is the x dividend date that whoever is holding shares until 29th of April will be eligible for getting dividend. And we will get the details of the stockholders who are eligible for getting dividend. We take around three to four working days, like say for example, 4th of May. 4th of May is the date of record which is used by the back office to get the list of the stockholders, the bank details, etc. Okay. And we are paying this amount on 10th of June. So you will have accounting entries only on declaration date and on the payment date. You do not have any accounting record on ex dividend date and date of record because these are all, you know, back office works. We don't have any debits and credits. Declaration, of course, you will have it, an entry. Payment also will have an entry. Okay. And the moment you declare dividend, it will become current liability because it has to be paid in that period itself. Maximum like around two to three months time. And even if you escalate also, you'll have to pay interest. It is not to be paid in years, in months only. Yeah. So when you declare, there will be an entry, retail earnings account debit, dividend payable credit. So when you debit retail earnings, your equity will decrease. Because remember super six, retail earnings is a part of your equity. And dividend payable, you created a liability here, the current liability will increase. Okay. And as we discussed this now, X dividend date and date of record, there will be no entry at all. You will not have any accounting record. Okay. And on the date of payment, yes, this dividend payable, it was created current liability. Now this current liability is going to be decreased. You are nullifying it. The amount what you credited here, it is debited. And cash account, the current asset will also decrease cash is the current asset okay right so these are the entries you are going to record in case of cash dividend one on declaration date one on date of payment cash dividends will have an impact on your current assets yeah and remember the dividend is only paid to the to, to the shareholders who are holding the shares suppose any number of shares which are bought back out of the previously issued shares they are not eligible for any dividend say for example a company issued 100,000 shares but we bought back 1000 shares from this company bought back 1000 shares so you have 99,000 shares only 99,000 shares you are paying dividend this 1000 shares we call it as treasury stock right so treasury stock you are not going to pay any dividend no dividend on treasury stock okay property dividend you want to give some property to settle the dividend okay so a shareholder is having say 10000 shares in your company and you've declared a dividend of two dollars per share that is twenty thousand 
20,000. Okay, right. 20,000. So what you do is, instead of paying cash, you will give him some property. Maybe land, building, missionary, whatever it is. Right. Now you need to settle in the form of a property. What is that going to be? A property dividend is like this. You purchased a property for say for example 15,000. But now the fair market value of this asset is say 20,000. You want to give this asset you want to give this asset to, to, to settle this dividend. So from your balance sheet, increase this 15000 to $20,000. Recognize this amount. Okay, so you need to check the fair value of the asset which you are going to give us dividend. Add this amount back here. And uh, this 20000 is to be booked in your books to settle. The dividend. Now let me show you an example here. A property dividend is settled on the declaration date. You need to check whether the fair market value of the asset is higher than the book value or lower. It is higher or lower. Bring this asset to the current fair market value. Okay. Then you adjust their value settle the amount check here on the distribution date you will be creating a property dividend payable and credit asset account say for example an asset value as per your balance sheet is 1,250,000 when you want to settle the dividend you just checked what is the amount which is available in the fair market if you sell this asset okay right you want to sell this investment and pay dividend instead what we are doing we are just giving the securities to the existing shareholders as dividend now you just check with your curiosity what is the fair market value of the same the fair market value of the asset is two million dollars but in your books, it is showing as 1,250,000 only. So you'll have to bring this asset to 2 million by increasing 750,000. Okay. So on the declaration date itself, increase the value by 750,000 to make this 1,250,000 to 2 million. Now let's see the entry here. Let's see the entry here you are going to increase the investments value by 750,000 by recognizing a gain of 750,000 declaration date. So that that 1,250,000 plus 750,000 will become what? 2 million. That you are going to record as retain earnings debit, property dividend payable credit. And the payment date, you are settling this dividend, dividend payable debit. Now investments, whether it is investment, land, building, missionary, whatever you are giving, that should be credited here. The next form of dividend is the script dividend. We declare dividend, but you know, because of the cash flow issues, we may pay this amount on some future date. We are accruing it now, but it's going to be you know, settled in the future. Then how do the shareholders agree for that? For this, what we are going to say is that hold it until certain due date. We will pay you interest. Okay, right? So I will give you a note, note, a promissory note as I am going to pay dividend along with the interest. But remember please, when your payment is settled with the dividend, dividend with interest, so there are two components included in a single payment, right? 
so the account is like dividend account is different from interest account dividend is adjusted from retail earnings but interest is to be expensed in the income statement so when script dividends are issued a note is issued to the shareholders and uh, you need to account both dividend and interest one is in retail earnings one is in your income statement take an example here 2 million 545000 shares we are declaring an you know dividend at the rate of 80 cents per share so how much it comes to 2 million 545000 times 80 cents the dividend to be paid is 2 million 545,000 times 80 cents will come to 2 million 36,000. How much is that? 2 million 36,000. Okay, this is declared on May 27th, but we said that. It would be paid on July 27th with some interest. Okay, 2,545,000 shares times 80 cents. Dividend comes to 2,036,000, which is going to be paid on July 27th at the rate of 10% interest. Now you calculate May 27th, June 27th, July 27th. So it comes to may june july how many months two months right how many months two months calculate two months at the rate of 10 percent per annum two million thirty six thousand times ten percent per annum times two divided by twelve comes to three three nine thirty three okay so it is 33,933. This amount is interest. This amount is dividend. So you have dividend and you have interest expense here. So it has to be separated like this. Dividend amount is different from the interest amount. Check now. All right, 2,036,000. You declare dividend, retail earnings debit, notes payable credit. Okay, and you are paying interest for two months at the rate of 10 percent per annum comes to 33,933 so your total cash outflow is 2,069,933 but you will include 2,036,000 in the dividend and 33,933 in the interest expense this is what you need to have in accounting okay don't mix it up with the dividend interest is different dividend is different then the next form of dividend is called liquidating dividend what is liquidating dividend you are paying from retail earnings and also from the surplus if you have any reserves if you have any other capital amounts it is not a good sign to pay a liquidating dividend to the shareholders you are declaring the dividend which is greater than the balance of retail earnings means what you are sweeping off the profits which is not a good sign when a company is really growing you want to put the profits back into the business to grow but instead you are sweeping off your retail earnings not only that any additional reserves etc you are just paying as dividends so you will have a debit retail earnings debit reserves and surplus and debit sometimes even portion of the capital to dividend payable not a good sign right yeah liquidating dividend is not a good sign stock dividend yes shareholders are happy with the company they want they want some additional shares so why do you buy the shares we will just settle the dividend in the form of additional shares so like how you gave property you will give additional shares for every 10 shares one share for every 10 shares two shares okay proportionate ownership 
the new shares will be issued at a free of cost in proportion to the ownership what you have in the company so that the company can enjoy cash okay instead of borrowing money from banks instead of borrowing money in the form of bonds paying them interest you can plow back the profits we can enjoy our cash flows in the company without worrying about borrowing from outside all right this will help you to to plow back most of you know the cash balances into the business when you issue stock dividend nothing is going to happen here no change in the equity at all so you are just adjusting the retail earnings with the share capital okay so your share capital will increase your retail earnings will be decreased but overall equity will remain same because under equity section itself you are reducing the retail earnings and increasing the share capital uh, one heading the amount is going to decrease the other heading the amount is going to increase okay equity will remain same no change but what happens here number of shares will increase you have 100000 shares and you issue 20000 shares now onwards you will have 120000 shares which will decrease your eps eps will decrease okay earning per share will decrease next year onwards that's the only difference but otherwise there is no change in the equity overall equity will remain same so when you declare a stock dividend just remember that the stock dividend uh, uh, is in proportion to the shares which the shareholders are holding at the moment okay and there is no change in the equity at all number of shares only will uh, affect now let's see here one shareholder is having thousand common shares we have a retail earnings of fifty thousand dollars now the market value per share is say 130 dollars okay right now we are issuing 10 percent stock dividend means what 1000 shares on which we are going to issue shares of 10 percent means you know how many shares 100 shares 100 shares at the rate of 130 current market prices current market price 100 shares times 130 how much is that One thirteen thousand. yeah 130 times 100 shares 13,000 retail earnings debited as usual dividend payable credited this is on declaration date okay then dividend payable debited now this time no cash no property but it is common stock or common stock increased dividend distributable or dividend payable is settled already so one credit one debit cancelled retail earnings debit common stock credit so you can even pass a single entry also as retail earnings debit common stock credit because there is a time gap between these two dates that's the reason why we need two entries separately okay even sometimes if you just pass a resolution and uh, you know the approval is done on the same date in that case you can pass a single entry retail earnings debit common stock credit stock splits see stock dividend we are giving shares to the shareholders in proportion to their holdings right in case of stock splits what we do is say we have 10 100000 shares issued at the rate of 10 dollars total amount of share capital is 1 million right and the current market price of this share is say for example now in the market it is 40 dollars so we feel that some shareholders may feel difficulty to buy our shares at the rate of 40 dollars in the market so what we do is we will just split the shares into say 200,000 shares two for one two for one okay so for one existing shares there will be two shares 200,000 shares in that case this face value of ten dollars will become five dollars okay 
the market price of the share is also corrected to that extent it is twenty dollars yeah now see if you see the twenty thousand shares at the rate of five dollars it is still one million again so there is no change in the share capital amount only the number of shares will increase in the stock split that's it no difference at all so the existing shareholder is not going to lose anything it will remain same yeah so the stock dividend is different from stock splits stock split is different stock dividend is different just i want to mention here this is not related to dividend at all stock split is not related to dividend at all stock dividend is is used for the settlement of dividend whereas stock split is just only to split the shares into smaller amount okay uh, to make higher shares to make it you, you know to create a market for the uh, for the potential investors who are having low level of incomes and here no accounting entry is required it is just only a memo entry that you will be you know uh, splitting the shares from ten dollars to five dollars from hundred thousand shares to two hundred thousand shares this is the only difference in case of stock dividend you are getting new shares okay and your retainer needs are adjusted against the shares your number of shares will increase uh, uh, eps will decrease but overall equity will remain same yeah equity will remain same in case of stock split nothing is going to change only the number of shares will increase eps will decrease and the fair market value even the face value will also change this is about stock split the next is preferred stock we know that the preferred shareholders are paid fixed dividend but how they are paid whether they are paid only in a straight profit or even any surplus profit also okay if they are paid say for example eight percent and they participate in the rest of the profits also means what they will get eight percent fixed amount they also participate in the residual amounts non-participating so we'll just pay them eight percent as promised no extra amount okay so cumulative preference shareholders can be participating non-participating non-cumulative shareholders also can be participating non-participating then what is cumulative what is non-cumulative okay cumulative means say for example you are paying eight dollars dividend for every hundred dollars share if there is no amount available uh, in cash balance what you do is you will add eight dollars of current year add eight dollars of to the uh, to the dividend which is due of last year you will be paying 16 dollars this year okay so you will escalate this dividend payable to the next year and you'll be clubbing along with the next year dividend to settle this non-cumulative means you'll have to forego dividend mostly these are all not encouraged so preference shareholders are not ready to bear this kind of loss so not much popular about this now let us discuss about cumulative dividend cumulative shareholders what is cumulative shareholders right their dividend is going to be accumulated and paid along with the arrears of dividend say for example we have uh, fifty thousand dollars amount available in the, in the in the net earnings which can be distributed as cash dividend so the common share capital is four hundred thousand preferred shares outstanding are one thousand shares share capital is hundred thousand and stated dividend is six dollars per share so we said that their preferred shareholders you will get six dollars per share yeah pay them six dollars from that fifty thousand dollars available what happens if the dividend is not declared for the last two years in case of non-cumulative in case of cumulative so preferred shareholder okay a non-cumulative will get six thousand okay 
and out of 50,000, we paid 6,000 to the preference shareholders. Common shareholders will be holding 44,000 out of 50,000. Preferred shareholders will ask you, what happened to the per years? You are a non-cumulative preference shareholder. So you will get only the current amount, okay? And uh, cumulative preference shareholder will ask you, was last year, two years, you did not pay me dividend at the rate of $6 on 1,000 shares. The due amount is 12,000. This year again, dividend is $6 on 1,000 shares. It is going to be 6,000. So the total amount is 18,000. So from that 50,000 dividend net income available for the distribution of dividend, you distributed 18,000 to the preference shareholders. Per year 12,000 plus current year dividend of 6,000 total 18,000 you still have 32,000 in your account which can be distributed to the common shareholders because these preference shareholders are cumulative preference shareholders okay right this is the difference between cumulative preference shareholders and non-cumulative preference shareholders so retail earnings are going to be appropriated to pay dividend to the shareholders both preference and you know, uh, common shareholders in different formats, especially in case of common shareholders, it will be from cash or property, or it can be settled in the form of script dividend along with interest or liquidating dividend if you are very greedy to get more. In case of preference shareholders, pay them fixed amount, okay, cumulative, pay them arrears as well, not cumulative, just pay only dividend of the current period this is about uh, the equity transactions settlement of dividend to the preference shareholders and common shareholders using different formats of dividend we also discussed about stock dividend and stock split and with this we end this session see you in the next session with a new topic till then have a good time see you